Okay, so this is one of our uh, first lessons. There are four major lessons that I'm going to give over the course of the semester on um, advice for writing um, on style and grammar. So basically all of your writing and essays that I grade, uh, I'm looking for a few things, uh, looking for you to do a few things that um, I need to see that you can do well. Um, so we're looking to see that you convey your ideas in clear, precise ways using uh, conventional grammar and style when you do it. So the best book on writing that I can recommend is a book called The Elements of Style. Um, this is a very teeny little book. It was invented originally uh, before computers and smartphones existed for college students to just carry around in their back pocket. So it's meant to be very clear cut, very to the point advice on writing for any college student um, to you know kind of carry around with them and and use as they need it. So all of my lessons come from this book and I recommend that you buy this book or um, look for advice on the internet that comes from this book because I think it's the easiest to digest for students. Okay, and just a little, uh, these are writers who, uh, who have commented on the elements of style. Dorothy Parker is a very um, a sarcastic writer. This is what she says about it. If you have any young friends who aspire to become writers, the second greatest favor you can do them is to present them with copies of the elements of style. The first greatest, of course, is to shoot them now while they are happy. Um, so Dorothy Parker had a very dark sense of humor. Okay. And then Stephen King, many of you guys know him. There is little to no detectable BS in that book. Stephen King uh, is also quite to the point when he comments on writing. And again, Strunk and White is the elements of style is my preference for uh, for buying any kind of a book on grammar or writing just for general advice. And that would go for now or, or for next year when you go to college. Okay, so writing lesson one is going to cover what are the rules concerning paragraph structure, what makes a well-written sentence, and what style mistakes should I avoid? So these are the very basics of how you should approach your writing when you go to draft and edit an essay. Okay, paragraphs. There is uh, no general rule on how many sentences a good paragraph would be. So the, the guiding rule is that you need to write until the paragraph is fully developed and comes to a conclusion. So make every sentence in the paragraph count. Begin with a topic sentence that connects to your thesis statement, your overall argument. This should be an argumentative statement and not a plot point. Okay, so we already went over that in the last lesson on writing. Op the, the paragraph should open with something argumentative. And that little topic sentence should connect to the bigger argument of your whole paper. Have enough supporting sentences to fully develop your ideas. That's where you're going to get into details from the story or whatever it is that you're writing about to support your argument. And then you're going to draw your paragraph to a concluding thought. Again, that paragraph should not just end with a plot point or a fact. It should sum up the big idea of the paragraph and come to a conclusion before you transition to the next paragraph of your essay. Paragraphs should neither be too short or too long. You should not have a paragraph that strays from its original topic, and it shouldn't be underdeveloped. So if you're looking at a paragraph and it seems like you're not going into enough detail or if you're rambling, that's where you're going to have to make a judgment call about how long or short your paragraph should be. Okay, passive voice versus active voice. Passive voice is one of the most difficult things to get rid of in your writing. Um, it is also the best way to clear up your writing. And it's very simple. You need to start with the person or the thing doing the action of the sentence. So instead of saying the ball was thrown by him, we would change that to he threw the ball. Now, we never speak in passive voice. No one would ever run into a room and say the accident was caused by him. We would say he caused the accident. 
Um, students have a tendency to write in passive voice because they mistakenly think that it sounds more academic or sometimes you just don't really know what you're writing about. And so you kind of start with the thing that's being acted upon before you finally get to the point at the end of the sentence. So you want to always change your voice to act, active voice where you have um, the subject, he, and then through the verb right next to each other without any, um, any words in between. Okay, so you're going to go to your document that goes along with this PowerPoint, and you are going to change these sentences to active voice. So go ahead and take a, a minute or two to uh, just run in and change those sentences, edit them so that they are in active voice now. Okay, so depending on uh, what you did to the sentences, dead leaves covered the ground. Okay, the subject of that sentence should be leaves. Okay, you can add dead or many leaves covered the ground. Either way um, is, is fine, but leaves covered has to be the, the uh, way that you would edit that sentence. All right, so many people uh, make the rooster the subject of the sentence. If you said the rooster crowed at dawn, that would be better, but the what's hidden in the original sentence is who is hearing the rooster. That is clouded. So it should be we heard the rooster crow at dawn. Okay, and again, the problem with the original sentence here is that it's his health that's forcing him to leave college. So health should be the subject of the sentence, not him. The health is acting on him. Failing health forced him to leave college. Okay, and then the, finally, she soon repented her words. She soon apologized for her words. Okay, any of those is fine. Usually, sentences that are shorter are stronger because they get to the point uh, more quickly. That doesn't mean they're less detailed. It just means there, there are no unnecessary words in the sentence. Okay, positive form. Here you want to avoid language that shows hesitation. Do not use the word not as a way to avoid making a direct statement. The lunch menu was not small, is not as good as the lunch menu had no variety, um, the lunch menu was boring, the lunch menu uh, doesn't change, so more specific is, is better. Change to positive form. Okay, again, move to the other document and revamp those sentences. Okay, correct answers. He usually came late. She thought studying history was a waste of time. The parents in Romeo and Juliet are deeply flawed. Okay, any, saying anything directly is better than avoiding saying what you mean. Okay, you also want to use definite, specific, and concrete language. So think specific, not general. Think definite, not vague. Think concrete, not abstract. The car had many problems that forced it to run poorly is not as good as the car ran poorly as a result of its crippled engine, aging transmission, and faulty brakes. Okay, so underline, uh, fix these sentences, find the uh, vague, nonspecific part of the sentence, and revise it. You may need to add information to the sentence to make it make sense, so you'll have to supply some, some information that's not there. Okay, again, go back to the document and change those sentences. All right, correct answers. It rained every day for a week. That's one way. He 
grinned as he pocketed the money. Okay, omit needless wording. Just like a painting should contain no unnecessary lines and a machine, no unnecessary parts. A sentence should contain no unnecessary words. A paragraph, no unnecessary sentences. This does not mean that sentences must be short or lacking in detail. Rather, every sentence is crafted with purpose and wastes no time in making a point. Okay, so expressions to avoid. Okay, now take out your, or open the document and see if you can change these expressions to something more direct with more concise language. Cut out the needless words. Correct answers, weather, doubtless, he, hastily, this subject, her strange story, because, despite my arrival, and is. All right, apply the rules. Wordiness often happens when you present a complex idea step by step in a series of sentences that might be combined into one sentence. Okay, so here is a series of very short, simple sentences. You're going to try to combine these sentences to make the information more concise. So there's many ways to do this, but you want to try to get all of the information across that's in this paragraph, but in the least amount of words. So this is 44 words. I can do it in 23 words. Um, so see if you can beat me. Macbeth was very ambitious. This made him wish to become King of Scotland. The witches told him that this wish would come true. The King of Scotland at the time was Duncan. Encouraged by his wife, Macbeth murdered King Duncan Macbeth became king. Okay, see if you can revise this paragraph. Hey, uh, oh, I lied. This is, I did it in 26 words. Um, so we'll see, maybe one of you was able to beat me. Uh, here's mine. Encouraged by his wife, Macbeth achieved his ambition and realized the prediction of the witches by murdering Duncan and becoming king of Scotland in his place. Okay. Thesis statements. Just as a reminder, your thesis statement should be specific and detailed, and it should be at the end of your introduction paragraph, always. It should be the last sentence or the last sentence or two. It should be a debatable point about the meaning of the story. Thesis statements and bad thesis statements, some examples. Shakespeare's play Hamlet is a play about a young man who seeks revenge is not a good thesis statement Sorry, uh, because that is, in fact, what happens in Hamlet. So that's just a plot point, more of a book report statement. Hamlet experiences internal conflict because he is in love with his mother. Okay, that is a better thesis statement. Uh, this is something that people do say about Hamlet. Okay, and, uh, but it's a little undetailed, uh, a little uh, lacking in detail. So we would maybe want more there for a full argument. Spirituality means different things to different people. King Lear and the Book of Romans each view spirituality differently. Okay, so this one has a lot of words in it, but it is a terrible thesis statement because it actually doesn't say how King Lear and the Book of Romans are different from each other. So that is lacking in clear argument. King Lear and the Book of Romans each view the soul as the center of human personality. Okay, that is much more specific, a very clear argument, and something that can definitively be proven by going to the text of both books. So that is what we're looking for, for thesis statements. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Okay, please come back to this lesson and look at the examples um, to uh, to um, to 
edit your work, especially for your last essay for marking period one and for your Lagoon essay.